so here today we are here for discussing why the digital native are claiming that streaming data platform can replace ETL. And, and we'll see why and we'll see how. But the first question here before starting into describing uh, how it is possible is why? Why do I need to change my data architecture? Why do I need to change my existing ETLs into something different? And the first simple answer would be for real-time interaction. And exactly like this, this example shows that when you enter in a shot and according to your specific profile, according to the context of the shot, the, uh, the stock, and according to um, the, the preference that you have, what kind of things we can, for instance, recommend you. And that kind of case can be extended to a wide range of um, application. It's simply where you would like to have more customer engagement, more real-time customer engagement, and much more interaction. So it's all about interaction. And that could be in retail, like the example I show you, or really in a in retail shop. It could be in insurance, for uh, insurance real-time quotes, for instance, or real-time uh, risk uh, assessment. It could be in telecom with the proactive customer experience management. It could be in marketing and video surveillance and security, in payment, in connected car. There are many different topics where you want to interact directly uh, with your customer. And this interaction means that, well, there is an impact on your architecture. Because that means that now, before, well, rather than getting the information, storing, organizing, taking a decision, that means that now you need to somehow react directly as soon as the event occurs. And that does not necessarily mean that all your data sources must be real time. 90% of your system can be still batched the only thing is that you need to be able to join, to merge hot information, data arriving in real time, with cold data, data residing in your data lake, data warehouse, or databases. And then you need to have an architecture that does that. So the point here will be that you need to be able to make evolving your architecture towards at that point. In addition, you have all the questions that your business asks you if you are in IT or if you are business that you ask to your IT. Things like self-service data, I would like to be able to explore my data um, in a quite, um, with a quite good freedom. And of course, to be GDPR compliant. I want to be able to expose with a quite good level of freshness the key corporate data, and I would, would like to use them and to consume them, well, either in batch or in real time. And of course, I would like to integrate this data into my digital platform of my microservice architecture or my service architecture, well, where I have actually all my business services running. And of course, on all these questions, I want to have the lower costs and the running costs as low as possible. And of course, the latest, um, the last kind of request you can receive is how you can connect the data science workbench for deploying my models, my machine learning model, and to be retrained with a quite good fresh data and being applied on runtime in real time. So I'm not saying that streaming will resolve all those things, not at all actually, but the streaming can be at the core of a data architecture that can tackle most of these questions. And the aim of the short presentation of today is while well, presenting one of the key aspect of the streaming and first understanding why streaming and how streaming can deal with distributing data and then how it is directly linked to ETL. 
And once we have done that, we will be able in a future meetup to explore the data architecture around that concept. Well, so then the first question would be, okay, but is it really possible to apply streaming technologies for doing this kind of data management things? Is it really possible? So, well, my objective then was, okay, let's first demystify the streaming. What does it mean and how does it work? And before starting, well, there is one key fundamental concept to understand is the duality between stream and table. This is actually at the core of the complete theory and concept in architecture behind stream. So let's first see that. I hope that most of you have a good idea on what is a materialized view on a relational database. So that's, that's quite simple actually. You have a table here where um, you have your, your source data. And from this table, like your customer data, for instance, from this table, you would like to build a materialized view. A materialized view is simply one simple query on this table. For instance, you select only the customer living in Leuven, for instance, and you would like to materialize this list of customer living in Leuven into a materialized view. And every time you will have an update on this source table, you will have a refresh of your materialized view. So how does it work? This simple relational materialized view system that has been you know, developed years ago. Um, as soon as you have any modification here in this table, all the updated are streamed to a log, a commit log. And from that commit log here, you can still stream here the update and then you will apply your query. In this case, the selection of the user living in Leuven. And the output of this query will be then materialized into a materialized view. Well, actually this is exactly what happened in streaming. In streaming, you have your source here, the table, it could be even a table. And every update on this table will be streamed to a collector. So not a commit log, but a collector. And the collector could be something like Kafka, Pulsar, ActiveMQ, any kind of collector. And then here as a consumer, I can start consuming the stream of updates, applying my query, like the selection of the user living in Leuven, for instance. And then the result of my query can be materialized into a table, my view. And here you have the perfect example of this duality between stream and table. A table can be converted into a stream, a stream of updates. And on this stream of updates, if I still make here a query, this query can be materialized in a table. That means that every table can, every update on a table can be streamed as a stream of events. And this stream of events can be uh, in turn be converted into a table. And this is what we call the, the, the duality between stream and table. A table can be seen as a stream and a stream can be seen as a table. And this is how we can then transport data with streaming technology. And that means that once you have done that, well, you can start streaming almost everything. You can focusing on your operational system, for instance, your DB transaction, and every transaction on your DB, every update on your DB can then be streamed as an event. You can, of course, starting streaming your server, your log of the server, the log of the application, any kind of application coming from device, IoT, whatever. And then this stream can be materialized into table and then used by your microservice architecture, for instance, or manipulati manipulating by any kind of application. You can decide to materialize those tables on disk, whether on bucket on S3, on Oracle, Teradata, Elastic, whatever, and then potentially being bridged with your data warehouse or with your data mart for reporting. Or you can directly consume that stream with stream processing application for real-time reactivity. 
And then you can see here that whatever is batch on real time, you can do the tree of them. You can either consider your stream of event as materialized view, as sync table that you write on disk, or as a stream that you uh, process in real time. And this is how actually, this is the fundamental concept behind replacing ETL by streaming. Because that means that here you can use the streaming technology for streaming the updates, materializing the table, applying any transformation, and then either continuing processing or writing on disk. But then you can tell me that, well, it looks nice, it looks magic, but isn't it too new? Because I usually prefer using enterprise solutions that are well proved. And actually I would like to show you that it's, it's not really new actually. And I would like to show you the evolution, the last years of this kind of technologies and the product offering we have today on the market, which is just huge. So first, indeed, it's not so new actually. The first um, important date was in 2003 when Stanford published the stream paper. And for the first time, we had a complete explanation about this table stream duality. How a relation, here a relation means table, can then produce a stream if you apply a query on that relation. And how that stream can still, in, uh, in turn, build or uh, create a relation. And this paper mentioned everything you have to know about this stream and table relationship and still all the operator, SQL streaming operator you can apply on stream were defined at that time. So it was the seminal paper about that topic. Of course, later on, this kind of paper uh, gave, gave birth to streaming processor and complex even uh, processor. But let's keep that for a moment. The next important date after was 2015. In 2015, Jay Krebs, he was still working on LinkedIn at that moment, and he was leaving LinkedIn for creating his own company, Kafka, or Confluent that uh, um, produced uh, Kafka. And Jay Krebs published a post about the data streaming platform on LinkedIn. So at that time, for the first time, he was introducing the concept of data streaming platform for data architecture. Um, if, you, if you look back at that post, he was explaining that the architecture of LinkedIn was quite messy. And even though from the service-oriented architecture, it was perfectly nice, in the backend concerning data, it was a mess, the mess. It was sharing data between very and high number of applications. There was no way to have a lineage between who used what, and there was even some aggregation of different levels from different applications that created some um, inconsistencies in the data. And then he was proposing to use a data stream platform in this concept of transporting data and materializing table using streaming for separating data producer and data consumer. And for the first time, we had the complete description of a data streaming platform for data architecture, leveraging streaming technologies. And then starting from 2016, we had the first early adopters. First, we had some um, big data vendor starting recommending to use uh, tools like MyFi and StreamSet. In Autumn Works, uh, the, the suite was called the uh, Hadoop Data Flow. Uh, for processing data in real time, but also in batch. Uh, for instance, StreamSet and iFi internally works with streaming system. So if you look at how NiFi works, actually you have internal queues between these uh, different operation uh, that you, uh, different processor that you pipe each other and everything is streamed, even if you are dealing with batch data. Internally, NiFi will slice the things, will stream, apply the processor and then uh, materializing the output. So it was a kind of early adoption of streaming technology for both batch and real-time um, workload. In 2016, 
the CTO of Confluent uh, made a, a very provocative talk uh, called ETL is dead, long live to streams, where she was presenting why you should or why you were able to move your ETL to streaming technology. And the point here was just that, well, the extract transform and load could be actually replaced by you extract once, you ingest once, and then you transform and load multiple times to a different consumer. And using streaming technology and Kafka at the, at the core of the architecture. Um, coming back to the materialized view example or analogy, this commit log in between can be here, something like Kafka. And by the way, Kafka is not a published subscribe uh, product, is a distributed commit log system. So it is perfect for transporting data and especially for transporting batch or real-time data. Um, interestingly, in to, between 2016 and 2018, we had a lot of internet players starting migrating their ETL in streams. And you have uh, Netflix actually has described a lot of their migration to all their ETL in, in streaming technology. They are not the only one, but it's still between 2016 and 2018 was still something done by the big player on, on the internet and big data bundle. And starting from 2018, actually, we start seeing the rise of the streaming in enterprise. So the first was uh, WSO2, the well-known company for uh, service-oriented architecture software. And they announced the release of the WSO2 streaming data platform for real-time and batch ETL. It was, it was the first time a company addressed the streaming technology for data management in an enterprise context. So we were going out of the internet player um, uh, zone for arriving in the enterprise area. Um, in 2019, Google, Looker, and Alibaba proposed an extension to the standard SQL for streaming SQL. And this is very interesting because that means that they, they thought it was now time and SQL string was mature enough to propose a standard extension to SQL for applying SQL directly on streaming. And if you have that, that means that now you have a standard way to apply SQL query directly on stream. And then, of course, for ETL, this, that's just perfect. And then you had a lot of different announce uh, till now. So you had uh, Azure Databrick provided a complete stream-based data house slash data lake uh, on Azure Cloud. And a lot of different people started writing new kind of pattern for managing your data in batch and in real time and cloud. Um, AWS announced this year that you have the Kinesis, the Flink for Kinesis streaming ETL, which is an add-on actually on the Kinesis uh, stream processing layer on, on AWS, especially for streaming ETL. And I think the most important news of the enterprise domain was this year when Dell EMC announced the streaming data platform for enterprise, which is an end-to-end -end data platform um, using streaming technologies. And today, actually, what we see is enterprise-grade products on the market. Um, and this is why you can see that the maturity now is quite good. Um, because you, you, you can see that there is a competition in the market and there are tools on the market. You don't need to develop yourself all these things on Hadoop or on Flink or on Spark. Product exists. Starting from Digazoo, the product we developed, uh, we have developed at Uanova, which is a complete data hub based on streaming technology for batch and real-time data. You have things like Absolver, Stream, Segments, Stitch um, from, from Talens. Um, Equalum, you have today on the market a really good offer for this kind of, of technologies. So, already 20 minutes. So, some takeaways from this short talk. First, um, Stream enables to design a single data architecture for real-time 
batch and a high volume. And in the next meetup, we are going to see how it impacts the costs in terms of dev, run, and, and TCO. And the simple intuition is if you separate the architecture for batch and streaming, you have two different architectures to maintain, so two different run costs, two different TCO. Um, we can, of course, we are going to go a bit uh, deeper in detail in the next, uh, in the next meetup, but in the, in a, from a high level point of view, you have one single uh, data architecture to maintain for both. The second message I would like to give you is stream processing technologies are mature, and today you have enterprise grade products on the market that you can directly use. And still, you don't need to have yourself the knowledge for creating or developing yourself this kind of technology uh, within, within those framework. The product offering today is quite major on the market. Um, in the next meetup, I would like to investigate as well the difference between what we call today within this product, ETL data pipeline, data lake, data hub. Well, there are different versions, different feature, and that could be interesting to see uh, according to what you are looking for, what are the products uh, available on the market. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Sabri, for this inspiring introduction. Um, it was uh, some, uh, some silence in, in, the, in our group, um, but I'm convinced that now in the Q&A session, uh, questions will come. So I'm, I'm looking together with you at the questions because they are just in the questions now. Uh, I have two questions, one from Yasser. Uh, what do you think about AWS Glue Manage ETL service for transforming stream data? This is the first question. This is from Yasser. Um, no, so the second one is uh, is uh, uh, related with Kafka. Let's let's answer the first this one. Yeah. So, so so this is part of the of the streaming offering from AWS actually. So well, yes, it's it's a it's a really good start. So. Um, it's it's good, and and that's a really good example about um, this kind of um, um, of 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 streaming ETL service can be used today by in, in cloud provider by by cloud provider. So well, so what I think about that is good. Yeah, it's a very good technology. So try try using it, and you will first hear kind of um, uh, a first flavor of what kind of of streaming ETL service you can you can have. So yes, try it. Okay, thank you very much. A second question uh, from Danish and is related with Kafka, is related with the technical implementation um, and uh, is the following. You mentioned that we can use Kafka for as a data transfer mechanism. My question is how the an application keep record of cursors last seen data. In case of databases, we can have a last update timestamp to query the latest data. Yeah, that, that's um, well, that that's a bit technical, but but indeed there is many different ways to achieve that. Either you can use a kind of state that you maintain in the connector of Kafka for doing that, and then the the you can you can keep a kind of uh, timestamp of the latest update you got from from the database directly on the connector, or you can keep that directly on your on the consumer side. Um, but if you want, we can we can take this question after, uh, and I can talk directly to Danish about that. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, it's uh, one question about uh, from Alain Alain Issa. You say that streaming will kind of replace the ETL, but we 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 still have to make some transformation and load of the data in order to create the right data product for the data science. Is this right? Yeah, completely, and and that that's the point actually. So the T in the ETL will remain. Um, so most of the product offering today focuses a lot on that, on providing the ability to to transform your data directly on stream, um, to, in order to have the right target format. Whether the target format is for the target table, is for data science, for data mart, or for an application. Uh, so of course, yes, and that's why. Um, Stream SQL is becoming so important today because there is a lot of really complex information that you can do quite easily today on Stream SQL. 
And if it is uh, still a bit too complicated to, to do that in Stream SQL, as I said, a lot of tools today are providing uh, a graphical user interface for, uh, for the transformation. Like in, in Bigazoo, for instance, the project we, uh, we built, uh, we have a complete graphical user interface in which you drag and drop blocks, and those blocks will be then um, uh, deployed for implementing the transformation. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next question from Laurent. Uh, do you make a distinction between tooling that can do simple in-stream transformation and more enterprise ETL tools traditionally used for more complex transformation? Is ETL then really dead? You know, it's, it's always a question of, um, of need and, and non-functional constraints. Um, and, and the need and the non-functional constraint will give you the right tool to use. So in certain tool, of course not. Um, so if you, if you ask me in, in a purely, let's say, um, data house or, or BI settings context, in between the, the, data, the data mart and the landing area, well, of course, ETL can still be there and, and can still work um, quite perfectly. Um, you can still have the, an, an, an ETL need actually, and there is not one solution that fits all. You know, there is always place where ETL and traditional ETL can, can fit. Um, now coming back to the first question, the fact that that can we compare a traditional enterprise ETL uh, to to stream-based tools? Because this is this kind of distinction we have to do now. Um, I explain here how streaming technology can be used for replacing ETL. Um, and there was, by the way, a question about, okay, but now do we have to code each ETL? Um, and this is the distinction we have to make now. So streaming technology has the ability to do the same functional extract transforming load as the enterprise ETL, but giving you some advantage like scalability, conversion between real time and batch and so on. But indeed, if you take Flink Spark, well, you have to code yourself. But then it's not that that we are comparing here. We are comparing the products, the enterprise grade products using streaming technologies comparing to ETL tools. And this is a much uh, fair, a much more fair comparison between, because then you are speaking about high level products that are managing different pipelines, not just one transformation pipeline, different pipelines uh, that usually provide the user graphical interface for abstracting the complexity. And this is a more fair comparison products that are using or leveraging stream technology comparing to uh, uh, existing uh, ETL. Thank you very much. So uh, we have uh, very interesting uh, questions coming in. So uh, and the next question, a very general question about how to learn more about. The question is where and how would you recommend to begin to learn and start discovering the benefit? Well, um, the, I, was, I, I think there is really two entry points. Um, if you are architect, or if you would like to understand the in and out of the streaming, um, well, I think it's worth starting by the, uh, I think the, the Confluent uh, blog posts are quite interesting. Well, I think if you look at what Confluent proposes as, as blog posts and information, what Dell EMC are today explaining with their data platform. Um, I think with those, uh, and WSO2, I think with these three, you can access to a lot of information about how from an enterprise point of view, you can use streaming based technology. Um, I think it's, it's a good start. Um, another good way to start is from the product point of view as well. So um, in, the, in the latest slide I shown with the different products, that will be interesting to contact one of the uh, product uh, vendor and, and to, well, to see with them because all of them has a marketing content, uh, content coming with the products and the, this marketing content usually explain the benefits. Um, uh, and, and that's usually quite fair because, because they, have, they have a difficult position. They need, to, they need to sell for replacing what exists. So their, their, their marketing uh, storyline will be based on mainly on cost and value. And that's interesting to see what kind of thing they, they explain. Uh, but this is more for a business point of view. From pure technical point of view, um, 
I, I think that starting from Confluent is the most technical side because then you will understand how you can stream data and what kind of data uh, stream based architecture you can put in place. Um, but then, and, and going a bit further by, by reading about streaming and stream processor themselves. Uh, stream processor uh, are, are very um, informative in terms of what kind of value you can, you can create out. The issue here is that streaming is by definition technical. So you will find a lot of information about, about how you can use Kafka, Pulsar, Spark, and Flink, but it will not give you a lot of insight about, okay, but what's the business value for me? If you would like the, to have the business value, well, either we organize the next meetup on that, or look in the product uh, side, you will have much more business and you'll get answer. Uh, thank you, Sabri. And indeed, uh, I believe uh, it will be valuable uh, to have next uh, meetings. Uh, so going up further in this uh, area. Uh, the next one uh, is uh, a qu general question and uh, is related with the ETL, but uh, in fact, the question is related to the cost. Um, the, the question is as following, how time, uh, how time the standard ETL can still exist on the market? Because as now the majority companies use standard ETL and the, to migrate, I think it will take much time and resources. So it's really again about, uh, well, the opportunity and the, the best moment to, to migrate and of course the cost related risk. Yeah, um, yeah, indeed. And, and I will merge that question with a, a previous question, I think from Julien uh, about uh, what are the danger when you start uh, migrating uh, this kind of, of, of things to, e to streaming and, um, and, and when. Um, that, that's, that's a really good question actually. And, and you are completely right. Um, most of the customer I've seen so far are not really going for a big bang approach. They are not changing everything from one day to another. Um, however, what they are doing is that according to a roadmap of use case, they are selecting different use cases um, and they use this use case for creating what, uh, what McKinsey call a, a two-speed IT. In a two-speed IT, you have your traditional IT that, that continues working, that, that works as, as usual. And on top of this normal IT, you start creating your, your, your next IT. Um, and then the first use cases are actually the first business case for starting implementing uh, these new tools. And this is where usually you start replacing uh, or you start adding new ETLs in streaming for, for this kind of use case. Um, but I have to say that, that you should not focus only on replacing ETL. It will be replacing, you know, uh, replacing the same functional things by another technology. I would rather advise to look at what are your ambition in terms of data? What are the role that you envision of data? Is your data management or usage, is it something purely for like you have done in data warehouse and BI? Or do you want to include your data in new operational process? Do you want to give your data to different microservice or service architecture? Do you want to have new pipeline for machine learning? And what are actually your business ambition? And what are the IT enabler or IT capabilities you need to put in place for supporting this ambition? And, and then you will see that, okay, do I really need to have a real-time architecture and a batch architecture? Do I really need to merge them or not? And then replacing the question about the ETL into this global picture. So it's, it's rather a strategic um, direction first. What will be my business ambition? What are the IT capabilities? And do I need them in those capabilities to have anything related to, uh, to, to unifying batch in real-time for cost and TCO reason? Yes, thank you very much. Um, we have uh, uh, a latest question uh, for the moment. Uh, is it related with the tooling? And uh, so it's related with Kafka. Uh, can you use Kafka to make real-time IoT application with a Hadoop Spark-based cluster? Wow, you're really technology-oriented. Uh, 
Well, okay. So, so first of all, if you have an IoT, um, a set of IoT devices, usually in between your IoT devices and Kafka, you put something in between, something that is uh, that manage actually your IoT device, something like MQTT that manage your connection, the connection, losing of signals, uh, and so on. Um, so usually the traditional pipeline is device, MQTT, Kafka. Then up to you to choose in terms of consumer, what kind of stream processing framework you are going to use. And just pay attention that what I'm going to explain here, it's not really what I explained in the first part of the presentation. The first part of the presentation was really focused on data management. How are you going to organize your data architecture? And here we are rather speaking about, okay, I have some data sent by my devices and I would like to consume them. So indeed, MQTT, Kafka, you can optionally have a data lake outside of Kafka for storing all your uh, event coming from your devices. And indeed, if you would like to have real-time application, nothing stops you to have something like Spark or Flink uh, or, or Kinesis from AWS uh, to be able to process those events out of Kafka for real-time processing of your uh, IoT device information. I see other question here um, uh, that, uh, sorry, Airflow is a popular solution in startup, but still ETL. Well, um, be careful. I, 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 sh I would not qualify Airflow as an ETL. Uh, Airflow for me is rather an orchestration. So it's, it's for me, it's much closer to what we call a business process um, manager. So it's, it's something that will orchestrate different tasks. So it's, it's not really an ETL. It's not really made for extracting, transforming and loading data uh, from one point to another. By the way, there, there was, I, I just come back to the question from Julien ah, about yeah. um, the danger um, of, of migration and what we have to think about. Uh, that's a really good question actually. Um, so first of all, still it, it really depends um, if you develop yourself a solution or if you buy a solution. If you buy a solution, one of, one of the product I showed on the last, uh, on the last uh, slide, um, there are really few danger because the tool actually implement everything to control this kind of risk. Uh, and I would say the, the most important risk without the tool would be first the skills, the skills you have in the house for implementing yourself this kind of solution. Um, this is not really easy. If you don't have the right people and the right team, that could become something quite risky. Um, and then the governance. I think the, the governance is something really, really um, key in this kind of, of migration because usually um, this is not something quite clean from the beginning. Uh, there is no metadata management system in place. There is no enterprise data model in place. Um, and, and the streaming ETL will actually give you the ability to distribute the data to, uh, to much more consumer. And that will actually increase the need of having a really good tracking of your data custodian, the process for onboarding a, customer, uh, a consumer, the process for onboarding a new source on your streaming uh, platform. Uh, so the governance will be something really key as soon as you migrate to this kind of technology. And actually it's an opportunity. The migration for the streaming data platform will be an opportunity to, uh, to, to redesign correctly your, your data process in terms of, uh, of governance. Sabri, normally the host is now to, up to you uh, to present the, the next steps uh, and... Uh... Yeah, um, well, that's something we, we, uh, we could have added to the pause, but, but here, well, yeah, so, so as you know, it's, it's the first edition of this kind of meetup and I really would like to, continuing, uh, to continue organizing these kind of, of things. And then I would like to have your feedback about your, the next step. What is your feeling about the next step? So in chat, you can just put uh, A, B, or C. So um, in, 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 in A, uh, the idea will be to have still the same kind of, of meetup, a short, short presentation of 20 minutes, and then discussion during uh, 30 minutes. So the first topic will be why streaming and uh, why streaming ETL and stream data platform can decrease run cost in DCO. So it will be really focused on costs, now that we have 
the basic understanding of the concept. So let's talk about cost now. The second option will be um, to stream data platform, data lake, and actually how does it work together? And this is more about data architecture here. Um, or do you prefer to have a kind of sighting of the uh, stream data product? Uh, you know, the product I showed you on the, on the last slide uh, and having a kind of uh, ID of segmentation between those different products, what are the specific things and how they can fit to your specific uh, choice. So if you can just put uh, A, B or C uh, in the chat and, and Carmen and I will, um, will get a re the result for organizing your, I think it should Cur be the next Currently, uh, I have a lot of Bs. Uh, so, and uh, the one who are a little bit hesitating, uh, they put C, but afterwards the, the B. So uh, okay. I see a lot of interest for the B for the, for the, for the moment. So please continue to send us uh, your, uh, uh, your ideas. Uh, and uh, of course, could you or could also contact us by, by mail afterwards. Okay, so, well, it was the first edition, so I hope you, it was good for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your passion. And uh, of course, we, are, we also are going to learn. Uh, to improve uh, and to adapt to what you you need best. Uh, remember, we are now in very challenging time uh, and uh, we are facing this timing and this time is really for organization and people who are able to adapt. Uh, this probably will be a, a condition to survive. So we, we are also listening to you, uh, to what you are interested in and we are going to, to adapt and to answer to your needs. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening.